How you been, bud? Good, good. Having fun. Living a, living a dream, baby. Living a dream. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, man, we've got you coming up to uh, our training event at uh, Kalahari called Tools. You all excited about that? Ready for that? I am. I am. I don't do in the water park, though, because I go in the water park and they call the aquarium. So <laughs> I try try to stay away from that. But uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm ready. I you know, it's one of our shows. We we just you know, it's I, I don't know how many years we've been at the at, at, at tools now. We were going to tools before it was tools. Yeah, it was uh, tech train and something else. And then we were coming to the Holiday Inn when it was back at the Holiday Inn. It was the Holiday Inn. So we got we got a great venue, um, uh, the Kalahari Resort up there. It's it's a hell of a good venue. It is a lot of fun, and uh, it's great for kids and families. Um, it's great to take your your shop, your whole shop, with their families. Let the families do the the water park and stuff. There's an arcade there, and there's a bunch of stuff. There's a buffet, so it's not crazy as far as the food goes. Um, I know the last time I ate at the Italian restaurant there, and that was pretty good. I have yet to eat on on, on site. Oh, really? I eat on site, yep. I heard the steakhouse is really good. I heard the Italian, sort, what is it, sort, Sortinos or something? Yeah. I heard that's like really that. good. Uh, but it's a great venue, and I think that's why we looked at that uh, years ago when we started going up there, is to bring the families. Because most training events, what happened at nighttime, a Saturday, a Sunday, and it's just usually the owners or techs with no family. So this was kind of geared towards the family. Right, right. And 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 it's it's nice because you don't feel like you're taking the whole weekend away from the family going to training. Yeah. Yep. Right. And uh, you know, hopefully with the family there, there's a little bit more sobriety. I don't know. <laughs> so no, and, and we've, we've built in a lot of time that they can spend with their family this year. Um, you know, we got a jam pack. We got thirty seminars that we got lined up, Rick. That's unreal. Seminars. I know. I know you guys got me in there for three. We got you in there for three, and I think you wanted to do more, but we we actually we actually ran out of seminar space for everybody that wanted to do more training. Yeah. We well, we couldn't you, get any you had more seen my you had seen my uh, testing profitably, selling testing profitably. Yeah, that was one right? class. I was like, yeah, man. But I think <laughs> you and I talked. I think we'll have to do that. It's a standalone. So I think that would be cool. We could do a road show or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about what you're going to be up there teaching. So we've got some really cool stuff up there. The first, so we have a sales class up there. It's called the customer said no. Uh, now what? Uh, and you know, we all, you know, we all pushing real hard. We want to make sure we got everything. We, we go into all the detail and everything like that. And, and it's like, wham. And then we get the no and it's like, oh crap. Take, takes the wind right out of the sail. doesn't it? Oh man. I'll tell you what puts a hole in the side of the boat. You hear the jaws music coming in. I'm telling you, it's bad. But the reality is there's a way to handle that. Most people hear the no and they think it's like, oh crap, they don't like it. But the reality is, if the client didn't want to work with you, they wouldn't even say no. They'd just say, give me my keys, and they're out. The fact they're saying no, right, and this is the mistake we make, the fact they're saying no is they're genuinely saying, I'm interested. But not today. But maybe not today. Maybe I just don't understand the value enough, or I don't understand the repercussions enough, or I don't. There's something they're missing. Right. A lot of times that's what happens when you get an objection. But what we tend to do is is when we hear an objection, we kind of do the old Kevin O'Leary bit from Shark Tank, right? Where you're dead to me, get out. And, and it doesn't <laughs> have to be that way. It shouldn't be that way. Uh, so it's a really fun class. I, I Anybody that's been in one of my classes, I hope you've learned something, but had fun at the same time. I've learned a heck of a lot from you, Rick. Uh, even when I was with, uh, when you were my coach, I learned a heck of a lot from you. I appreciate that. I really do. Um, but you know, this business is serious enough. We got, we got to start having some more fun. That's, I think that's important. Uh, but it's a great class. You're going to walk away with it. Some really actionable strategies and techniques that are going to help you um, be more successful dealing with people that, uh, put some resistance up. And and again, resistance isn't a bad thing. It's just them wanting you to slow down a little bit. 
yeah, right? I understand. So, I so that's, that's a great, great class. Advisor class. And even an owner's class. It's a great owner's class. I'm going to tell you what. You can send your advisors to these this class, absolutely. But my question to you is what happens when that advisor leaves and someone else comes in? Yep. See, if the owner comes into the class, it doesn't matter who's on that front counter. He can show them how to do it. Teach them. Yep. So Teach it them. is a good owner's class as well, for sure. Good. Uh, good. So that's a real great class. Then we have another class called Trust is the True Currency. And that one's piqued my interest, even though I'm not going to be attending all the classes up at Tools. Uh, I did see you're doing that one down at ASTE. Yes. And I am on that list. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a very, very cool class. Um, you know, we work so hard to make sales do this, do that, get our get our techs to do stuff, get our get, you know, get our clients to do stuff. And and we gotta understand some we can't control things. Right. Right. We you know, I tell people there's the circle of control, the circle of influence, and the circle of concern. And the circle of control is what you can actually deal with, make changes with. And I'm going to give you the boundary for that. That's your that's your skin. So Good. anything inside your skin, you can you can do some controlling on that. Anything on the outside is either going to be circle of influence or circle of control. Circle of influence is when we're dealing with other people. Now, you were a client. And when we first started coaching, I'm sure I said do stuff. And you're like, yeah, no. Yeah, like read a book. Like read a book. Yeah, no. And <laughs> and 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 over time, what happens is I have clients now that I can say jump off a bridge and they would do it because they know it's going to be okay on the other side, right? right yeah. And and what we realize, we want to influence more and more people, but we've got to realize the secret sauce to that is trust. Yeah, and that's okay. not just business. That's that's personal too. It's every relationship you have. Yeah. You know, that's why I listen to clients tell me all the time, "You've helped me be a better husband, a better father, a better you know brother, and a, a better son." And it's because everything we coach on is relational. Yep. And you can apply it to the other areas of your life. And it's really super cool. So we have that. And that's another half day course. And again, it's a lot of fun stories and, and, and some exercises to get you thinking. And, and, and then the thing with my classes, I don't want to be up in front, you know, be in the mouth for three hours or four hours. Nah, whatever you, it is. Very make, you make sure everybody's interactive. I want I Your want feedback, awesome. man. I want your stories. I want your suggestions. I want to hear what you've been through. I want you to ask questions. I want you to push back. Let's have some fun and really dig in, because yeah, I, I promise you, I'm ready for it. It's no problem. We're gonna have fun. That's that's not just an owners. That's in everybody's class there. Right. Technician, everything. Uh, you know, trust is where everything starts. Absolutely. I think it was you, as my coach said, we're not in the car business. We're in the people business. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, that's where it starts. and here's the thing. People think we're in the money business, but we're actually in the heart business because you can't get to the wallet until you go through the heart. <laughs> yeah, you're right? right there. You got to so, build that I mean, it's just, relationship. You hit that heart the right way, that wallet just pops right out, yep. you know? Um, so that's that's our second class. And then we got a new class we're doing for this this show, and it's all about secession. And it's super, super cool. Um, I'm actually still working on it, so I'm pulling up my notes now as I go through it here. And uh, I might pop in there because I'm getting – I have a plan. 10 to 12 is my is my plan. So yeah, you know, that's these are the things that – that's the classes that are interesting me at this point. And, and there, you know, the reality is over half the shops in the next probably four years, three years, are closing up due to the, the owner aging out. and. Yeah. These poor guys have worked blood, sweat, tears, and they think they're going to get a million dollars for their shop. And typically when they're getting ready to sell it, it's a reaction to something. Somebody quit. Uh, they got, you know, maybe they got sued or they didn't get, you know, someone charged back money or, but typically it's like, that's it. I've had enough. And when you finally find out what it's really worth. Okay. When you find out what it's really worth, it it's sad. You got a guy I, I, thinking his shop's worth a million dollars and it's worth a hundred. 
I can vouch for that. And I think I was still one of you with my coaching when my father wanted my brother and I to buy it. Yeah. And he, they, the, the, the letter came and I was like, uh, no, yeah, <laughs> it's not worth that. Yeah. You know, for that much money, I'll go start my own. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, so you've got to be aware. And here's the other thing we're not aware of. You know, you think you've got a whole bunch of time. Like we just have this endless runway to get it better. But the reality is if you think about it, you probably got 30 years. So that gives you 30 chances to get it to where it should be or could be and then maintain it for a period of time. So you're showing that it has traction and then get it so that it's as sellable as possible, right? There's a factor uh, to seller's discretionary income. So you want to make sure that you're getting the highest factor to that that you possibly can. There's certain levers that you're going to pull to make that bigger, better or worse. Um, so we're going to talk about those things. We're going to talk about the risks. We're going to talk about, um, you know, creating a blueprint for this and different methodologies are coming up with it. Um, here's one just to give you an idea. For those of you that are starting to think, I, I, I want to get out in the next five, six, seven, eight years. That's a great thing to put in an ad when you're looking for somebody. Ownership potential. Because yep. that's going to draw somebody that has entrepreneurial dreams. And they're going to be invested in the company much differently than somebody that's just working there. So it's something to think through. It really does. Uh, but ultimately, something that I, I, I said years ago that really rings true your business is for sale every single day. And I have people tell me, go, no, it isn't. I go, yeah, it is. If it's not on the market, you're the one buying it. Make sure it's worth buying. And yep. one of the things I've really been on a crusade for, I've been doing this now 20 years. And one of the things that I'm really on a crusade about is most shop owners, and that might be harsh, but it's it's there. A majority of shop owners don't own a business, they own a paycheck. I'll, I'll and, vouch for that. You know, and 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 what I want to do is get it so that you are actually a business owner. And a business owner is somebody that owns a business and it's passive income. That's the goal is to get you out of the business enough so that you can pursue your dreams, your goals, and everything like that that you've always wanted to for your life um, before your life is over. Because otherwise, you're going to work yourself to death, right? They're going to carry you out of a bay someday. Most, or, most of my parents' ages, people, that's what it was. Yeah, absolutely was no it was. Um, or you're going to figure this out and you're going to get one of the things we're going to talk about is getting a valuation on your company every two or three years so that you can make sure that the valuation is going up. You can get feedback and realize what do I got to do? so that I can get that valuation higher. So yeah. these are different things that we're going to be talking about in that class. That's going to be a longer class. That's a four-hour class. We're going to be putting exercises in there, lots of frank discussion, and a little bit of hard-hitting honesty, right? Because I you know, I, I heard a long time ago that a true friend will stab you in the front. You not know, in the back. Not in the back, right? And I would rather come up, and give you a stab now and say, dude, you got a problem. Your shop's not worth what you think it is and give you time to fix it. Right. I'm going to tell you most shop owners, when they say I want to retire, they really need about a 10 year window to make that happen. And that's where I'm at. They got to have a five year window of building the shop up, getting it the way they want it. Then you need about another five years to keep it there. Yep. Okay. You know, my struggles when, when, you know, when it was kind of thrown in my lap, you know all about that. Yep. Uh, and since then, the business is very profitable. Uh, they're financially, there's money in the bank. I don't have to worry about where the bills are getting paid from. So my job, like you had said, is to make the business profitable, sustainable for the next person who wants to buy. Absolutely. And I wouldn't have been there without the instruction from you and others. Well, and I appreciate that, you know, and that's the thing. There are too many shop owners out there, Brett, really frustrated at where they're at, but they won't go and get the help. They won't attend great events like tools because they feel like they should figure it out themselves. And that really isn't true. 
you can only manage a business to the point you've been managed to. So you've got to get more instruction. You got to get help. You know, I think it's super important. I have a coach. I think everybody should have a coach because when you do, it makes all the difference in the world. It keeps you focused. It keeps you accountable. They help you set the goals and they help you get there. Yeah. So get to this training. Don't stop. It's a great event. It's going to be, it's a great location. Um, I mean, the kids will have a blast. If you got kids, I, I mean, hell, I have a blast. I have a, I have a picture of myself by the gorilla, you know, and I was going, dad, you know, it's just, yeah. So, so how important is training? Rick? On a scale of what? How important is training to anything? Oh, it, it's thing. critical, right? It's yeah. absolutely critical to get that training because that's the first step, right? Is learning and then doing. Yep. It's the second part of it. You can't just learn, right? You got to learn it and then you got to do it. And then you refine it and you do it again and you refine it. And you do it again. Now you master it. Now you go to the next thing. You learn it again. What, what so, was, I think it was your motto. You get it to where you can, then you break it again. Yeah. And redo it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because what's going to happen is your business is here and you got problems. And Einstein once said, you can't solve a problem with the same level of intellect that created it. So you've got to get a little bit smarter and you solve that problem. But guess what happened when you got a little smarter? You got new problems. Yeah. Right. Business is not. A business success is not about avoiding problems or getting problems out of your life. You're going to have problems until the day you die. That's a sign of life. Problems are a sign of life. What you're going to get is new problems. And that's what we want. We want new, bigger, better problems because those are a sign of growth. That's and, and that's, that's what this is. a sign of going growth. up up the mountain. Absolutely. The like Rafiki said in the Lion King, it doesn't matter. It's in the past. That's absolutely right. And, and it's one of those things where if you're not growing, if you, if you are dealing with the same problems today that you were last year, you're stuck and you need somebody to help you out, whether that's pull you or kick you or something, you need someone to, to help you out. Yeah. So training is important. And on an employee side, if you've got an owner that doesn't want to invest for you to go to training, that's not showing a very good employment I mean, you want, as an owner, you want to show your employees to keep them there because it, we all know it's hard to find techs mm -hmm. and staff. So if you take that investment, invest in training and in, in, in their skills, whether they stay with you or not, you're helping build them to be a better person. Absolutely. So one of the things I used to do when I had my shop is when we went into training, we went as a shop, whole shop yep. went. And when we did that, it was really cool because the morale boost that it gave the team was just unreal. Like these guys came back and it wasn't one person. It was everybody was on fire, which was just awesome. Right. At that point there, it was me containing it. Um, but to get the biggest bang out of my training buck, I sat down with each person and said, okay, you know, you pick your classes and they made sure they were all in different classes. And, and then they were each required, when we got back to the shop, during our, our, our company meetings, they had to give 15-minute discussions about the class and tips and tricks that they learned in the class. And that way there, what it did was it stretched my training budget out. I got more bang for that buck. And it also, when an accountant, well, an accountant, when a, when a technician or an advisor goes into a class and they think, oh, I'm doing great. I'm all that and this and that. I'm going to listen. Yeah, that was kind of cool. That was kind of cool, cool, but nothing changes, right? But if you go in there and say, hey, you're going to teach what you learned. Now they got to pay attention. Now they're paying attention. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Now you, so, now you are getting your bang for your buck. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it works really well. So if, if you don't know... Um, Registrations will be open, but save the date for October 20th to the 22nd of this year up at the Kalahari Resort in the Poconos for an awesome training venue. We have got a loaded seminar schedule. Unlike years past, we have really revamped this program. Uh, we filled the vendor hall. We have no more vendor booths available. And that was 35, I think. 
So we have a, we have a great schedule. Uh, trainers like Rick coming up with 180 Biz, and um, you know, technist. We got technical service advisor. We got diesel and collision shops. So we got it all. We got all the gambits covered for this event. So we're we're excited. We put a lot of effort into it, and I know you guys put a lot of effort into getting the classes ready to do these. So, oh yeah. Um, any last words, Rick? Yeah, be there. And if you're there, tell you what, I'll let you in on an amazing little breakfast place, not too far from there. The food is out of this world good. Awesome, awesome. So, Rick, hey, I appreciate you taking some time with me today to talk about what you're going to be teaching up at Tools. Absolutely. Can't wait Thank to see you. you there. And, um, you know, my word to you as a shop owner or technician or service advisor is, as a shop owner, put the training into your budget. Yep. If you're a technician or service advisor that do not get training and you are anxious to learn, go to your owner and say, hey, I want to go. Um, mark it on your calendar and be there. So, Rick, again, Rick White with 180 Biz. And if you are in need of coaching or training, make sure you look up him and hook up with him. So thanks again, Rick. You're welcome, Brett. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you out there at Tools. You have a, you have a great summer, and uh, let's get ready to have some fun. All right, man. Take care.